A few years ago, Idaho was at the bottom of the FBS playing in the Sunbelt Conference with no real regional rivalries to play and the school just sort of fell out of place. They watched as Boise State, an in-state rival, rose to prominence becoming a household name as they went on to play in major bowl games. In 2017, some would argue the school had hit rock bottom as it was announced on a teleconference call that the Sunbelt was not going to renew them and they were forced to make a tough decision. They could stay at the FBS level and play as an independent and maybe get an invite to another conference down the road, or they could cut their losses and move back to the FCS level and reinvent their football program. They chose the latter and may have been the best decision they ever made as they will now host an FCS playoff game with a top 8 seed. This is the story of the rise of Idaho football. This is the story of how a team going back to their roots revived their football program. But before we get into this, if you enjoy college football content like this, make sure to leave a like and subscribe. I am planning to release multiple videos a week this season. Also, let me know what your favorite story has been this year in college football in the comments section below. Idaho began playing football in 1893, would not earn their nickname of Vandals until 1917. The origins of the name came from an alumnus, Heck Edmondson, describing the basketball team as playing defense with such ferocity that they vandalized their opponents and the name just sort of stuck. They won the Pacific title in 1927, but it would be almost 40 years until they won their second conference title in 1965 as a member of the Big Sky Conference. They would win another six Big Sky titles from 1968 to 1992 under Y.C. McNeese, Don Robbins, Dennis Erickson, Keith Gilbertson, and John L. Smith. From 1985 to 1995, they made the FCS playoffs 10 times and reached the semifinals twice. They decided to move up to the 1A level in 1996 when they left the Big Sky for the Big West Conference. Under head coach Chris Tormey, they made it to their first ever bowl game beating Southern Miss in the Humanitarian Bowl and route to their last conference title as well. They finished the year 9-3 and won their 15th game over Boise State in the previous 17 matchups. During the 1999 season, the Vandals beat Washington State for the first time in 34 years and Tormey left to take the head coaching job at Nevada after the season. Tom Cable followed Tormey, but went 11-35, while Nick Holt finished 5-18. Erickson returned for the 2006 season, but after starting 4-3, they lost their last five games and finished the season 4-8, and the games weren't even close. Erickson bolted after the season to take the Arizona State head coaching job after telling fans that Idaho was where he wanted to retire. Things would only get worse for the Idaho football program as they would go 20-50 and 50 under Rob Ackie, with the only positive outcome of his tenure being that they got to play in the Humanitarian Bowl once again, where they beat Bowling Green 43-42. Paul Petrino would be named Idaho's next head coach in 2013, with them playing as an independent after the WAC collapsed as a football conference. Paul is the younger brother to Bobby Petrino and served as wide receiver coach under John L. Smith in the 90s. Petrino was viewed as an offensive mastermind and he would help them transition into the Sunbelt Conference in 2014. His tenure started off with a rough 1-11 record in 2013 and a 1-10 record in their first year as a Sunbelt member. There were small improvements going into the 2015 season and they would win the Idaho Potato Bowl in 2016 beating Colorado State to finish the year 9-4. That would be the high point on the Petrino era as they would fall to 4-8 in 2017 and after the season it was announced that they would not be staying in the Sunbelt Conference. With the departure from the Sun Belt, Idaho decided to return back to their roots and drop down to the FCS level to rejoin the Big Sky Conference, a conference they are original charter members of. The Weber State head coach spoke highly of the return of the Vandals program saying, they make the league better because they are a dang good football team. Some even felt they could win the conference title their first year as a member. The Vandals instead went 4-7 that first year, but had their rivalry games with Idaho State Eastern Washington and the Montana schools return, which led to some fun games. Petrino couldn't rebuild the program though, as they struggled going 5-7 in 2019, 2-4 in 2020, and 4-7 in 2021, which led to his firing. Enter Jason Eck. Eck grew up in Wisconsin playing as an offensive lineman for the Badgers during the late 90s. He spent time as a grad assistant at Wisconsin and Colorado, before becoming an offensive line coach under Nick Holt in 2004 for the Vandals and tight end coach in 2006 under Erickson. Eck spent the majority of his career coaching the offensive line with stints at Winona State, 
Ball State, Hampton, Western Illinois, Minnesota State, Montana State, and South Dakota State. At South Dakota State, he won the AFCA FCS Assistant Coach of the Year Award in 2019, his first year as the Jackrabbits offensive coordinator. He was named the 36th head coach of the Idaho football program and immediately reinvigorated the Idaho football program going 7-5 his first season and leading the Vandals to the FCS playoffs where they lost in the first round. Fans entered the 2023 season with lots of ex- hope and excitement and the team delivered. They started off the season strong beating three ranked opponents and sold out the Kibbe Dome multiple times including a game against Montana that had them play on ESPN. They rose as high as number 3 in the FCS Top 25 polls and lost in a thriller to the eventual Big Sky champions, Montana, by 2 points. They pulled off huge wins over Montana State, who was ranked number 2 at the time, and rolled into the playoffs winning 3 of their last 4 games, including demolishing in-state rival Idaho State 63-21. They went into Nevada earlier in the season and beat the Wolfpack 33-6, which proved the program was back. The players believed in Eck the minute he became head coach, with running back Nick Romano saying, I just really believed in what Eck and his staff were saying. I believe that they really did have a vision for the program and that they could turn it around. Obviously, the first year, they held up to that, got it done, and got us to the playoffs for the first time in what feels like forever, and then we were on pace to do it again this year. Eck went from the brash new kid on the block his first year to a highly respectable coach his second year. They nearly beat Cal and beat three-time defending Big Sky champions Sacramento State who had just beaten Stanford earlier in the season. Idaho is not just a special football program on the field, they also have a special aura around the school off the field. The Kibbe Dome, despite being the second smallest venue in the FBS at the time, gained a cult following thanks largely to its inclusion in the EA Sports and CAA football video game series. But none of that obscured the nagging fact that the Vandals, for almost all of their time in the FBS, were a team without a home. They saw their program falter when they tried to keep up with Boise State when they decided to jump to the FBS at the end of the 90s with them. When the WAC fell apart, they were left with New Mexico State without a conference as the Mountain West slammed the door shut on the possibility of that happening. They watched as they went from the team of Idaho, dominating Boise State for many years, to becoming a football afterthought. While some programs would have cut their losses and either cut a football program or just play as an independent, Idaho decided they were done going about it the way everyone else did, and was supposed to. They decided to forge their own path. While it's had its rocky periods, it has all paid off as they will be the number 4 seed in the 2023 FCS playoffs. Eck, who is 46, could continue the legacy of coaches who use Idaho as a jumping off point for the FBS jobs and later Power 5 jobs, or he could decide to stay and build his FCS juggernaut and try to secure the school's first national title in school history. The program has taken a massive step in the right direction under Eck, and they have the killer mentality to accomplish special things in December. But what do you think? Can Idaho win the national title this year? And if not, who? Let me know in the comment section below. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to check out one of my other videos YouTube thinks you will love right here. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe for more college football content. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, remember to embrace the grind.